Hello everyone, Dr. Brian Scott with you. This is Wednesday, March the 6th already. We're in the month of March. This is the month we started the podcast, Insights to the End Times. And uh, we're coming up on our second year anniversary in just a few weeks, which means we're well over 600 podcasts. And we have been examining scripture after scripture to see where we might be on God's timetable. We've also been examining a lot of world events. And in those world events, we're seeing a lot of things occurring that the Bible says will take place before the end. We also have seen the intensity of those events increasing uh, exponentially, not just a little bit, but a whole lot. And we've been seeing all kinds of things that Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24 coming to pass, such as wars and rumors of wars, and nation against nation, and pestilences like the COVID-19 pandemic, and all the other things, earthquakes occurring everywhere, and fires and floods and so on and so forth. The world's trying to do everything they can to control all of these natural events. But what they don't realize is the Bible prophesies. I mean, you can't stop what the Bible prophesies. It's going to take place. It will come to pass. Paul wrote Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, and he said, Perilous times shall come in these last days. And then he went on in the next six or seven verses to describe somewhere in the vicinity of 21 to 24 events that would define peril. Boy, are we in the midst of those things. But now we're studying what's going to happen at the tail end of everything. After the 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ, following the battle of Armageddon and the seven years of tribulation, Jesus will reign for 1,000 years, and at the conclusion of that will be God's great white throne judgment. That's the judgment that's been set aside for all sinners, all people who have been um, against God, refuse to accept God, et cetera, et cetera. There's no chance beyond this. There's no do-overs. There's no second chances. This is the final judgment. And everyone in that group, and there will be multi-millions, unfortunately, and all the fallen angels... Followed, who have followed Satan over the years. They're all going to be judged, and they will be doomed and sent to the lake of fire, eternal damnation forever and ever and ever. As that judgment is occurring, John, who wrote the book of Revelation under the uh, guidance of the Lord Jesus Christ, he declares we're going to see a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem, the first part of Revelation chapter 21. Yesterday, we were looking at the new Jerusalem, the holy city coming down out of heaven, adorned as a bride for her husband. And we quickly examined, what does that mean? Who's the bride of the lamb? Who's the bride of Christ, in other words? And we looked at the fact that traditional teaching has said it's the body of Christ. But Revelation chapter 21, verses 2 uh, 9 and 10 make it really clear in my estimation that it's not the body of Christ. It is the new Jerusalem, the new holy city. And I gave you four or five scriptures yesterday that indicate we, the body of Christ, are the body of Christ. He is the head. And you can't have the body... Just, detached from the head. Christ is the head of the body of Christ, the church. And, and we looked at these scriptures. They're so, to me, they're clear. I don't know what you'll think of that, but uh, let's examine the scriptures in detail as opposed to uh, what may have become a tradition. Today, I want to look at this new Jerusalem with you. We'll at least get it started because there's so much to share. It's so exciting. In verse uh, 10 of chapter 21, here's what uh, John wrote. He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. This is the brand new holy city, the new Jerusalem. Verse 11, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, 
clear as crystal. And she had a great high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates. And the names written on these gates, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So he's describing what the new Jerusalem, the holy city, will look like, which will be part of the new earth and the new heaven above the earth. So the new Jerusalem <clears throat> will be a, a, a city with great high walls, 12 gates, th and it goes on here to say in verse 13, there will be three gates on the east, three gates on the west, three gates on the north, and three gates on the south. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on the, them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Amen. Uh, verse 15, And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth, and he measured the city with the reed. It was 12,000 furlongs. Its length, its breadth, breadth or depth, and its height are equal. So it really is a cube. Verse 17, he measured its wall. It was 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel. Well, he's given us these uh, thoughts to begin with about this great city. So I want to share some uh, clarity with you on that. It's going to be absolutely magnificent. And the glory of God will be its light. There won't be any need for any other form of light. No need for sun, moon, stars, etc. God's glory will be far more than efficient and sufficient. God the Father and Jesus the Son and likely the Holy Spirit will all live in the city of the new Jerusalem. In verse 11, it says, The glory of God, her light was like a precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. When it speaks of being clear as crystal, it is so fine that it's translucent. You see right through. It's so powerful, clear as crystal. Now, verse 16 talks about its size. And it says it's laid out like a square, and the length of each side is 12,000 furlongs. Well, converting that into our terminology, that's 1,500 miles in length and in breadth. So that's 1,500 miles square. Wow. And being that it's a cube, it's 1,500 miles high. But Let's just talk about the horizontal square footage for a moment. It's 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles. In other words, it's 2,250,000 square miles will be called the New Jerusalem. Perspective-wise, if you take the Rocky Mountains and stretch over to the Appalachian Mountains in the United States, that would be its length. And its width would be from the Canadian border all the way to the Mexican border. It's going to be massive. Massive. And there are gates on all four walls, three gates per wall. Amen. And there's an angel on each gate. And each gate bears the name of one of the original 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. The gates sit on foundations. And these foundations are made of precious, precious stones. We'll get into that tomorrow. And the names of the 12 apostles are written on those, uh, on those foundation stones. Now, here's the last detail we are given in terms of uh, terminology here. The Great Wall is 144 cubits high. That's 216 feet or roughly 22 stories high. Those are the walls. So can you imagine how high the gates must be? And there's three gates on each side. I got more for you on this tomorrow. It is absolutely outstanding.